there's a common tendency that people have to excuse themselves or to make an offer some type of compromise for why they don't do something. We men are more famous at it than women. Women usually have some other way of dealing with and sidestepping taking personal accountability and responsibility for some of their own actions but at the same time men will directly choose not to do something or to invent a new way to avoid being directly responsible for a direct action. We see in to modern day leadership roles most people will not take personal accountability when it comes to being wrong about something but they're willing to accept praises and accolades for being right about something. No one stands up and says, I did it, I was wrong, I am sorry, or please forgive me, or I will take responsibility for my actions. That's not something that men do, not normally. It's something that God requires of us to do. And that's what we're supposed to have done when we first ask Jesus into our life. We're supposed to have that knowledge of the responsibility of being accountable to God for our actions in this life. That we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have to admit that and admit the fact that we're a sinner in order to recognize that we need God. Otherwise, why get saved? Just to get out of your free ticket to hell? Well, that's one reason. But in becoming a disciple of Jesus, in following hard after him, and learning how to be like Tozer said, to be taught of God and to learn of God, we must take personal responsibility for our words, for our actions, for our attitudes, and for who we are. I know in myself there dwells no good thing. So when someone confronts me, I don't mind that. It's like, yeah, it's true, I did that. Or whatever they may say, I may say, Yes, I agree, or no, I don't agree. But I will take accountability for what I am and who I am. Because it's God that worketh in me both to do and to will of His good pleasure. And at times, I may confront certain situations and circumstances that, me personally, I don't want to. I just assume sidestep. Because that's what most people will do. Sidestep the issue. The sad part is, is that when you sidestep salvation, you're actually causing condemnation to that person's soul you're not providing for them a way of escape that they might be able to avoid something that's going to happen to all souls in life and that is to stand before a holy God and be held accountable whether they be born again of the spirit or born again of the flesh and determined to go either to heaven or to hell and if they're in the flesh they'll go to hell because if they're in the spirit God will save them and he'll change them and make them into the image of his son but something that is our responsibility, Tozer talks about today. He talks about how we can't remain silent as a Christian and shut up and put up and live out our witness without saying something about it. There must be an action, an attitude, an intent, a content, which is our words, as well as a living out by way of demonstration of the content of our words is accurate to the person of who we are. Now, I know in my life, personally, I have been both a adamant, outgoing, on fire, dynamic, born again, Jesus freak Christian, you know, out there telling people about Jesus, left, right, and sideways. And I have also been as filled with the Spirit and as much so, even like that, silent. Silent on telling anyone about God whatsoever. I have also been backslidden where I've been talking about God even while I was backslidden and at the same time, other times in my life, been backslidden and remained silent about God or even denied that I knew Him by way of my actions or attitudes or intentions or content of my life. So you see, I know what it's like. I've been there. I understand the fears, I understand the challenges. I understand what it's like to not want to do what God tells you to do. But you see, there's a reason why now we are stressing so much so more than ever before the probability of needing a personal relationship with Jesus more than you need anything else in your life because you're not going to do religiously what other generations have done overtly and obviously in being a Christian. You're not going to go out and tell the world about Jesus. 
That's why you need a personal relationship. So he will work with you in talking to you and developing in you the graces of God so that you'll, first of all, forgive yourself for denying him because that's what you're doing. And then second of all, learn how to share Jesus in the right moment, the right time, in the right place. But not to be silent about him. Because to be silent about God is to be Satan's footstool. You have provided a means with which Satan can elevate himself and talk all he wants to while he stands on your shoulders and you remain silent. We are meant to be children of the light and children of the day. We don't have to cause conflict, though that will come because we're obviously going to be the cause of conflict because we are children of the light. And when darkness is there, obviously there will be a conflict. But we are to learn how to, in every situation, turn a conversation, turn a realization of the fact that everything in life has an answer. And we are the ones that have the answer. We are the salt of the earth. We have an answer in Jesus. We pray. We don't hide the fact that we're Christians, but we don't demonstrate the fact either. We don't go out of our way to broadcast that we're a Christian by carrying our Bible every single day and everywhere we go. Although if that's your normal habit and you do read it, if you're carrying it because you read it regularly, great, then you should do that. But you should be talking about your relationship with God. You should be relating your personal dynamic that you have with a living God who is intervening in your life as well as you demonstrating by your life that you have a relationship in some way. Because that's what people want to see. They believe you and your words. They've heard the gospel. They know what it is. They know how to get saved. What they want to see is, will you live up to what they know a Christian is supposed to be? A silent Christian, is that possible? The Bible links faith to expression, and faith that never gets expression is not a Bible faith or biblical. We are told to believe in our hearts and confess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and we shall be saved. But we must believe in our heart. And we must confess with our lips. We must say that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is my opinion, brethren, that the silent Christian has something wrong with them. They are denying the faith. Psychologists try to deal with the abnormal human behavior linked to deep depression where people just go into silence. They will not talk. They will not respond. They just shut up and that's all. They live in their own little world that they've created for themselves. There's something wrong with the mind that does not want to talk and communicate. God gave each of us a mouth and he meant for us to use it to express some of the wonders that generate within our beings. Some of the magnificent, wondrous works of God that have happened in our life and we testify to that. Someone describing the Quakers said they did not talk about their religions or their religious practice, they lived it. That is a foolish simplification. For the things that are closest to our hearts are the things we talk about. And if God is close to our hearts, we would talk about Him. When you love something as much as you do, you obviously talk about it. When you are a sports fanatic, obviously you are fanatical about sports and you talk about it. When you are a political junkie, you obviously are in quite a lot of debates to begin with, but you are talking about that on a consistent basis. When you have your mind wrapped up in your job, you know that your mind and your heart and your soul are there. How much more so ought we to be if God is our first love? Because the truth is, He's not. So be honest. Even with Tozer now as we're talking, you and I, let's be real about it. God is not your first love. And as soon as you can admit that, you're already on the way. But as long as you keep denying it, as long as you keep lying to yourself, as long as you keep compromising by not comparing your sports agendas, your political maneuverings, your focus on other things, then let's be real. What kind of Christian are you? What do you talk about the most is your idol. And we have shows that will tell you what your idol is. American Idol, do you vote? Do you get involved in it? Are you wrapped up in it? How much time do you spend on your television? How much time do you spend on your sports? How much time do you spend with God doing what He said to do? Have you made disciples of all nations? Have you gone out and been a missionary? 
Have you worked at your church? Have you worked with your friends? Have you worked with your family? Are you teaching them the oracles of God? Are you meditating on the word of God? When thou risest up, when thou sittest down, when thou walkest on the way, when thou art at your work. When you are in those predicaments where God says, I want you to speak, and your job says, no, you cannot. What do you do? Eternity hangs in the balance. For some of the people, you remain silent too. We must be inspired by the Spirit of God, but we must also count the cost. For if we would be a disciple of Jesus Christ, we will lose jobs. I know, I have. I have been, <laughs> bluntly, and I, I won't use names or anything because I don't ever want it to come back on them, but I have been backstabbed by Christians of all things. You know, where They have removed me from job environments. Shock of shocks as I looked at my back and saw that they were holding the cross for me to be crucified on. Praise the Lord. Or I have also been challenged by non-Christians, but more often than not, I have found that the unsaved are interested in what you have to say. Believe it or not, when you put it the rubber to the road and you're willing to risk all, they'll listen. Even as the children of Israel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were cast into the fire, before they were, they said, look, we don't know if we'll live. We don't know if we'll die. But here's the one thing we won't do. We won't bow down to your image because we serve a God. And the God that we serve, whether he causes us to live or causes us to die, to die, we know that we will be with him. For where he is, there we will be. So, bingo. Old Nebuchadnezzar listens. But when they were cast into the fire, then he paid attention. So you see, your words are important. But your actions follow your words. You have to live up to the challenge that will come to the words that you declare yourself to be. And as a Christian, you ought to be consumed with this love that you talk about what you care about the most. And if you don't care about God, be honest about it and be real. And say, I am not in love with God. He is not my first love. This is not the passion of my soul. This is not the fire that I believe in. But I'm interested in religious things. Interesting. The quiet religion that apologizes, I haven't anything to say, does not square with the vision of the heavenly beings who say with their voices, holy, holy, holy. When people tell me they don't know how to witness, they don't have anything to say, or they don't have anything to thought, or they don't know what the pastor said, or they don't know what they just learned at church, or they don't have anything to pray about, they don't have anything to do, I can only say, holy cow, what are you pretending to be? You may say, well, I worship God in my heart. I wonder if you do. I wonder if you are simply excusing the fact that you have not generated enough spiritual heart or heat to get even your mouth open to declare one thing about God. With so much so now, the advent of technology, having texting and having Facebook and having Google and having Twitter and having all these things that you can do and you get involved to do, do you bring God into it? Are you a part of this new technology in declaring the gospel to those around you? Or are you just taking in and not giving anything out? The scary thing is about with Tozer is that when we look at ourselves and we examine ourselves, we have to be real about it. We have to say to ourselves, yes, as I did when we started this study. I have denied Jesus at times. I have admitted to being with Jesus. I have shown my faith. I have demonstrated my faith. And I have walked away from my faith. I have done all of these things. And I have declared to those at the time even now that I am with God irregardless. That whether I denied Him or not, I knew that God was with me. So you see, God is always with you. And He will not leave you nor forsake you. And you will be shamed one day when you find that you should have spoken and you remain silent. There is no such thing as a silent witness, period. It's a lie and you're being deceived. You were meant to open your mouth and if you can't, it's because you didn't study to show thyself approved a workman that need not be ashamed. 
Right? I mean, dividing the word of truth. Dividing it into pieces so you can share it with people. Sharing even the littlest of things. For even the one thing that I tell every Christian they can do and they can't live up to. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not in thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct thy path. You can share that. Because if a person trusts in the Lord, he will direct their path. Will you? Will you trust in the Lord to open your mouth? To give you the words to speak as Jesus promised would happen? Because he would send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter to us? Or have you denied the faith, turned your back on God, and walked away by remaining to be what you claim a silent witness?